Hey guys, this is John, and I'm playing Esartijo from Argentina, 2148. Let's go with an English this game. I'm going to play fast and just try to develop rhythmically. I can't talk. Develop rhythmically. Check. Not get bogged down in complications. So he puts the bishop on c6. He does. So we have a Catalan esque position. I am going to play my pawn to d3 rather than d4. Because I, I might want to play e4 to restrict his light square bishop. That's the plan. Let's go knight c3. And if he castles, I'll play e4 on the next. Well, actually, no. No, I won't do that yet. I'm going to retreat my queen first. Because I don't want to get hit with knight b6 with tempo. Well, actually, again, if I play e4, he has knight c5 now. So maybe I have to go rook d1 next and then try to go e4. b5? Really? Really? This move I do not believe. <laughs> b5. What happens if I take it? You're going to go rook b8? I see some lines that look like a lot of fun for me. I really want to take it. <laughs> I really want to take it. Line I'm thinking of is take rook b8, knight d4. I'm just not sure which knight. Oh, but it's just bad. It's not good to do that. I should not do it. I'm talking myself out of taking. Yeah, it's not a good idea. All right, let's just play a3. Discourage b4. The line that put me off it was knight takes b5, rook b8. I'll show you guys after the game. Too complicated right now. Okay, well now... He should play probably a5 now. Because if he doesn't play a5 and try to advance b4, this whole plan looks kind of ridiculous. So I expect him to do that. Hmm. So now I can play b4. I can play bishop e3. Bishop e3 is logical. Let's do that. It's simple. He maybe can go b4 all the same, but his a pawn will be hanging at the end of that line. He could play knight g4 to harass my dark square bishop. But I was thinking he might have some uh, issues with the undefended pieces. Okay, so here, can I just win a pawn b4 and take on a7? Looks simple. Let's do it. Yeah, just straight up winning a pawn. Might even win b5 if he's not careful. Take that guy. Thank you very much. He does defend it. Okay. Let's go here. Solid extra pawn. Let's just go bishop f4. Encourage him to do something like e5. Play c5. Probably a good move. Yeah, it's a good move. I want to discover to attack his rook, but uh Well, maybe I can. Let's go knight d2. Hit his rook. Hmm. He says, take my rook. You know what? I think I will. I think I just will. So if you take if he takes on c3, I take on a8, he can take on d2, but then I can withdraw my bishop. And I'm 
coming out on top material wise. I bet he'll just play bishop takes b7 in this case. Yep, and he does. So I'll take. So I gotta be um, heads up about my light squares. I don't want to want him getting some queen bishop battery going on those light squares and causing me problems. Okay, so now can I just defend my b pawn? He's eyeing f2 though. I don't like that he's eyeing f2. Knight e4. Let's go knight e4. I have an idea in mind. Is it a good idea? Knight e4. My idea is to put something on c7. But he can just throw in rook c8. Okay, let's do this instead. Queen c6 should not be an issue, but he plays it anyways. Let's just block. He can go f5, but it's not bad. If he moves his knight, I'll just get out of the pin soon. Like knight f6, I can just flee the pin. Okay, bishop d2. Let's go here. So now my queen is defended. No disasters on the diagonal. This is nice because I control e6 now. So he can't play queen e6 so easily. His queen is lacking some squares. He can go to b6, but I have bishop e3. Meanwhile, my rook is x rayed his queen. There's no immediate threat. But he's not comfortable with his queen sitting there, opposing my rook on c1. That's a theme I talk about a lot in these videos. Lining up your rook to oppose your opponent's queen. Hard to find a move for him here. Hmm. I'm just going to go threaten this pawn. And also threatening knight takes. Okay, because here, can't I just like swap your... Rook on c8, get rid of one of your attacking pieces. He probably plays queen d7 now. My h3 pawn is a little loose. Hmm. Now let's just take. Or is taking on b5 even better? That might be even stronger. Let's do that. I'm down a little time, so I gotta make that up. Let's pre move this. Let's take here. Bishop e6 probably should be played. Nope, does that instead. Check. can win h3, but I think I'm fine. That h-pawn is whatever. Let's just push. Um, let's give it a check. check. Move this back. Don't get mated, John. Queen c6, ooh, queen c6. No, queen c6 I have rook e4. And if... Time warning. Okay, let's just back this bishop off. Let's just make this simple. No Check. perpetual. Please, no perpetual. 
Um, I don't think there's a mate. Check. There's no mate. Um, yeah, even if he goes like queen h1, Check. I just take on g4. h5, and my king can escape. Okay, we'll check this one out. B5 was really wild. So I played this like kind of low risk way to win the pawn back. Queen a4 check. It's not the most testing move, but in a blitz game it's fine. Check. So just win the pawn back. He puts the bishop on c6. And I was mentioning how I wanted to stay flexible with this d pawn. Because I was intending to play d3 and e4, although that plan never materialized. Probably if I do it, I should do it earlier, like maybe right now. Because when I waited a move, like now e4 can be met by knight b6. And if my queen moves to b3, I wonder if he could just take this. I might have decent compensation in this case, like I have rook d1 or knight e5 attacking his queen and the bishop here. But um, it kind of put me off the whole idea. I went here thinking like, oh, I'll go e4 on the next move. But um, even if he had made some neutral move, I don't know, let's say, let's say he plays h6. If e4, he has knight c5 with these two under attack. But b5 really surprised me. Now, after b5, a line I was thinking for about for a while, because what did I spend? Probably 45 seconds or a minute on this move? Yeah, full minute. Whole minute on, on playing a3. I was contemplating this, rook b8, and then this move, which I thought was really interesting. Because after rook takes b3, knight takes c6, I'm going to have enough material for the queen. Uh, probably he should go here to defend the bishop. And then I could either take right away or take on e7. Let's say I take here. And I have, what, uh, a minor piece plus a rook and an extra pawn for the queen. So doing fine material-wise. But after I had calculated that line for a little bit and started trying to convince myself that I would have compensation, I realized, oh, actually, he can just play bishop takes f3. <laughs> so that derailed my whole conclusion. Because now I don't think I get sufficient compensation. Like, he, you know, I take, he takes here, knight c6, let's say, and then just this. Yeah, and I'm just going to be down. Just down material. I didn't get that extra minor piece. So, at that point, I think I even ruminated about this idea a little bit further, but I really should have just immediately gone on to the next move to consider and just totally dumped the idea of uh, knight takes b5. And by the way, like knight d4 looks kind of tempting too, but I think on knight d4 he can take, take, and then play knight c5, and I have both of these under attack, discovered attack by his queen. So it's a move that looks like it gives me something b5, but I don't think there's anything... Yeah, queen c2, the best move according to the computer. a3. I really thought he should play a6, or uh, a, a5, I mean, not a6 as the computer was suggesting. But yeah, maybe in this case I can take so that after rook b8 I can just play a4. This would not have been as effective um, after b5 knight takes because in this case a4 runs into a6. Yeah, and if I attack his bishop the same problem crops up. He has bishop takes f3 as an in-between move. So I played a3, he did this, but now my position got really, really nice. Here, and I just got to play b4 and win the pawn on a7. Now I'm cruising, this is nice. I have to say, I didn't see his c5 move. That caught me by surprise, that was a good move. It actually makes me think like maybe I shouldn't play bishop f4 in this position. Maybe bishop, well bishop d4 he has e5. So maybe that, that's not the right idea either. Maybe knight d4? Attacking his rook with tempo and also hitting the b5 pawn. I would have to give up my dark square bishop, but perhaps this is, this is fine for white. Let's see. Bishop d2, it says. Okay. I guess c5 is not a huge issue. I should just take. Okay. Hmm. I went after his rook. He did this. e5 would have been a better option. 
surprised the computer thinks he has this much, much compensation. Because I'm up in exchange plus a pawn. But it only says he's a little bit worse. So the line the engine's giving is e5, bishop e3, knight takes e3, pawn takes e3, queen b6. Okay. <laughs> well, now you have a point engine. Yeah, because this pawn is in trouble. I have to give it up. King f2 seems out of the question. That just looks way dangerous. Yeah. So it's saying, like, put a knight on e4 and let him take Check. this, and then go rook f2. And white's still better, but yeah, this looks much dicier. The dark squares are problematic for white. So if he would have gone after my dark square bishop with some enthusiasm, he could have maybe generated some significant compensation. As played, though, even here, it says take, rook takes, and then g5, again targeting the dark square bishop. My bishop has no safe square to go to. It's saying it's so valuable I should give up my knight so I can do this. So there were some hidden resources in the position that, in a blitz game, are very hard for him to find. He did this, setting up the checkmate threat on g2, but I just block e5, I move my bishop back, and now white should be safe. Any initiative he had is fizzling out now. Check. Yeah, and now I'm just Check. trying to tidy up the position. Possibly I shouldn't have even given him the h3 pawn, but I didn't think there was any harm in it. Check. Yeah, I, I could just push and get another queen. I was worried for a second like he might do this, but I do see now that I can just get a queen and not even capture and expose my king. I do wonder if he had queen c6, though. Because that was a move I saw right before he played his next move. I do have rook e4, but then f5, right? I guess I just still ignore it. Take, queen, takes. Oh, I'm mating him on g8. <laughs> Hello. Okay. So it is winning for white, even in this case. Well, that b5 move in the opening really shook things up. Yeah, right on move 11. Made for an interesting game. Hope you guys enjoyed that one. And please feel free to leave me any feedback in the comments. Thanks for watching today, guys. Talk to you later.